Hi guys and welcome back to another video with Network Nuts. This is a new one, something that you will not find a lot on YouTube, which is to install OpenShift on a virtual machine. If you work with a Red Hat, or a Red Hat partner organization or if you work in any major organization, you must have already heard of OpenShift. And installing OpenShift is something that people generally do not cover. You will find a lot of videos on managing OpenShift where we assume that the OpenShift cluster is already running. However, what if I need to install an OpenShift cluster by myself? Now I can do that on the cloud. On the cloud, we have managed OpenShift services available where you can install the OpenShift cluster with a couple of clicks on AWS or Microsoft Azure or on Google Cloud or anywhere else. However, what if I want to install OpenShift on bare metal? That is something that's rare, but is kind of exciting. And we should definitely at least understand the process if we cannot replicate it. We have two versions of OpenShift available. So you have a local a minimal version of OpenShift available, just like you have Minikube and Kubernetes. And you have the proper OpenShift available, like you have Kube ADM and Kubernetes. And here we are looking to install the proper OpenShift SNO, single node cluster. This requires a lot of resources. The minimum resources that we have, uh, that we need, are 8 CPU, 16 GB of RAM, and 120 GB of storage. However, that's the minimum. Uh, if you're looking to use it for experimentation purpose at least, then I would recommend that you'd uh, go with 12 virtual CPU, 24 GB of RAM, and 150 GB of disk. Now, I do understand that disk is not really an issue. Everybody has hard disk available in terabytes. But RAM and CPU might be an issue, due, due to which you know, a lot of people might not be able to do this. But even if you're not able to replicate it, I would really, really suggest you go through the video and at least understand the process. We have a diagram uh, here to understand how the process is going to work. The first thing that we require is a Red Hat account. I'm assuming you already have one. If you do not have one, you can create one for free at redhat.com. After that, once we have the account available, we are going to go to the Red Hat console. The URL will be there in the description. And from that console, we'll provide a couple of details such as uh, what particular version of OpenShift do we want to install? What's going to be the name of a domain? What's going to be the name of the OpenShift cluster? Uh, and download an ISO file. This ISO file is then going to be mounted on a virtual machine, which meets the required hardware criteria. Once that is done, we also require an SSH public key, by the way, right? So in order to connect to your OpenShift virtual machine, you need to have an SSH key-based authentication. We don't have a password-based authentication available. So while you go to the Red Hat console, they will also ask you for an SSH, for a SSH public key that you can provide. If you don't have one, you can generate one. You are here for OpenShift installation. I'm assuming you know what SSH is and how it works. So we have a small virtual machine, a 1G virtual machine. Uh, that we will use to connect to our OpenShift virtual machine. This virtual machine's only purpose is to use SSH and uh, you know perhaps the OC command so that we can log in. Other than that, this virtual machine does not need a lot of resources. So a simple Ubuntu, Red Hat, CentOS, whatever virtual machine with one GB of RAM will suffice. Once all of this is taken care of, the installation process will automatically start that you can monitor from the Red Hat console online. Uh, the installation process is lengthy uh, depending upon the internet and the resources because it downloads a lot of stuff. This will take a while, right? So it can take somewhere around 30 minutes to do the installation and you'll have to wait for it to complete. If there are errors, if there is any issue, hardware or software, you will again see that on the Red Hat web console. From there, you can tr you know troubleshoot the entire process. This is a single node cluster, which means that it's not something we recommend you use in production. We generally see multi-node clusters being used there. This is only for a testing and development purpose so that we are able to understand how the installation process works because uh, cloud-based installations often handicap us because we are able to you know, do everything with a couple of clicks. 
we don't really care about how pro, how the you know process works internally which is what we are here to understand so what i have with me is i have the red hat web console the hybrid cloud console available with me here and from this console i want to create my open shift cluster right so what we can do is once you're logged in into the console we can then go to this url which is console.redhat.com slash openshift and once you are at this particular url you should have a couple of options available here the major option being to create a cluster because by default if you've never done this before you don't have any cluster available so click on create cluster and you will get a couple of options available so you can you know create one with a couple of clicks on a cloud platform otherwise you can have the local option which is a, like a red hat openshift sandbox a very small version of openshift or you can have a data center one which is the one where you end up installing it yourself to have the data center openshift or the proper openshift we will also require the virtual machine the one that we have talked about so we'll also have to create this virtual machine so what i'll do is here is my uh, vmware setup and on this vmware setup i will end up creating a virtual machine so we'll create a, a blank virtual machine it will not contain any iso in, or anything like that we'll give it a name we'll call it openshift single node sno next next uh, i'll use this particular disk because it has more space available as you can see uh, next next operating system is going to be linux and we'll choose a uh, rel 8 that's fine next customize the hardware so this is important as per your recommended settings we will require 12 cpu will require 24 gb of ram 150 gb of hard disk so this is important yep everything is looking good here ram is looking good uh, i will want to connect to the internet so we'll change it from the internal network to the vm network so something like nat that you have in vmware workstation we don't have an iso available right so we won't choose any option for the cd dvd drive yet click on next and click on finish and the virtual machine is created with the required configuration now we can skip uh, we can you know uh, leave it be right now and download the discovery iso so go back to the web console for red hat click on create cluster give your cluster a name so i'll call it ocp4 and choose a domain name so this is a domain that will be used for all the cluster operators and for everything that will be happening inside the cluster so we have mylab.local which we'll end up using here because this is we are doing this locally we don't really have a actual domain available openshift version that we want to end up installing so you know depending upon your requirement i need openshift 4.12 so that's what i'm going to end up choosing install a single node cluster uh, so again it says that this is not highly available it's a single node so we don't recommend you use this in production or anywhere but you can use it for uh, development and testing purpose and click on next do you want to install any openshift operators we don't need any of these so again click on next and host discovery now once you download the iso file and you upload the iso file and uh, boot your virtual machine from the iso file your virtual machine will appear here right but till that time it will keep on saying waiting for host so click on add host and here you need to provide a public key because this is the public key that you are going to use to connect to the openshift virtual machine so as we talked about we will use another virtual machine's public key to do this so i have with me a virtual machine that's should be available it got disconnected let me connect to it again one second so i have with me a virtual machine here and i will use the public key of this virtual machine so let's go to the dot ssh directory and here i will download the id underscore rsa dot file will copy this 
and paste it here. So this is my public key and generate the discovery ISO. This is the ISO, uh, the ISO is generated, now download the discovery ISO. Uh, now this is a 104 MB ISO, so this should not take a lot of time in getting downloaded, depending upon your internet speed. And once it is downloaded, the next step that we have is to boot the virtual machine with this ISO file, right? So I'm going to skip forward to the part where the ISO is ready to be used. Once your virtual machine is done booting up and downloading all the content that is required, you should see the login prompt. Now, of course, you cannot log in because this is a SSH based login only using a key based authentication. So we don't really have a password to work with. If you want to connect to the virtual machine, you can connect to the virtual machine from the other workstation machine that we were earlier using. Once this has appeared here, if you go to your OpenShift console, you should see that the host appears here. Now, if you have all the requirements set, the CPU, the memory, the storage, and everything, then the state should be ready. If the status is not ready, then you should see an error here, which will uh, tell you that what is missing, why is it not ready? So we can see that the hardware, the network, and the operators, everything is good to go. And we'll click on next. It will take the storage. The storage is good to go. The machine network, we'll use the default settings. Host inventory, the default settings. Use the same key for the connection. That's fine. Click on next. Summary of everything. If everything is according to your requirements, if it's good to go, click on install the cluster. And the installation process is going to start. Cluster installation will take time depending upon your resources, uh, the amount of RAM that you have, uh, CPU, etc. And this will typically take around 20 to 30 minutes to complete. Uh, we'll wait for the installation to complete and then we'll talk about the post installation verification. This took almost 50 minutes, depending upon again your internet speed, because we the setup you know ends up downloading a lot of images to use. Uh, we are talking about container images, and uh, that takes time. So 40 minutes into the process, we are done now. You can see the ins installation has uh, completed. You can download our cube config file from here, which is important. So you might as well you know download this and keep it somewhere because you won't be able to download it later. We will launch the OpenShift console, which is going to fail because your DNS is still not configured to do this. Your cube admin username and password is available here. And if you want to access the console, then you will have to change your local DNS. So click on not able to access the web console. And you have an option to update your local Etsy host file. Copy this, copy the content open the local Etsy host of your uh, laptop or whatever you are using and we'll update this according to our requirements. So I'll just update this. Save and exit. Launch the console. Click on advanced. Accept the certificate. Wait for it. And here you are on the login. Your username is cube admin, which is available here. Copy your password. Click on login. And here you are logged in into your OpenShift cluster. You can see the cluster status. Everything is good to go. There are some warnings, but can be ignored as of now. If you want the OC command, click on the question mark here and go to command line tools. Here we have the OC command binary available for different offerings, Linux, Mac, and Windows, depending upon a requirement, download your OC command. 
Other than that, if you go back to clusters, your clusters should also appear here. OpenShift provides you with a 60 day self sufficient trial or a self sufficient subscription where you can work the console for, for 60 days. So we have 59 days to go as of now. Because it is a premium product or a premium offering by Red Hat, you cannot use it for free forever, right? We have OKD available if you are looking to go for the absolute open source version. But here we have the OCP4 or the cluster available. It is available for 59 days. The cluster version status, everything is available here. Provider is none because this is on-prem bare metal. And if you want to SSH to the console, you can do that as well. So if you try to SSH to the virtual machine via the root user, it's going to fail. And the installation never asked you for an username. So you have never created a user while doing installation. Some people say that the cube admin user is what we use, but that's again wrong because the cube admin user is used for the cluster. It's not available on the virtual machines operating system. So if you notice your virtual machine is using the Red Hat core OS and the core OS uses the core user. So the username is core and via this user you can connect. So your command to connect will be something like SSH core at the rate the IP address of your OpenShift virtual machine and that should create the connection for you. Other than this, if you want to do more of OpenShift administration, you can uh, go for different OpenShift training offerings. However, the training offerings do not include the installation. Thus, this demonstration becomes very important because it teaches us how to do the installation of OpenShift. I hope this was useful to you and try to replicate it if you have the resources available. Otherwise, I hope you are at least able to understand how the installation process works.